Welcome. In a previous video, I installed Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server on a Raspberry Pi 4, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu Desktop on the Ubuntu server I set up. So I'll put a link in the description to a write-up on the commands I'm using in this video so you don't have to copy them from your screen. So I need to log in here. So I have a fresh terminal. So the first thing you want to do is update your package list. So you want to type sudo space app space update and hit enter. Okay, so that's finished. I'll clear my screen. So in order to install Ubuntu desktop, you want to type sudo space app space install space Ubuntu dash desktop. So there are a few different desktops you can use. So Ubuntu desktop, you might consider the default, and then you have Zubuntu, so if you wanted to install that, you would put an X here, and that installs the XFCE desktop. Next is Kubuntu, and that's with a K, and that would install the KDE desktop. And finally, you have Lubuntu, which installs the LXQT desktop. So if you're familiar with Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS, then it uses LXDE for the default, and this is LXQT, so they're kind of similar. But I'm just going to install the Ubuntu desktop. So hit enter. It'll bring up this huge list of packages it's going to install. So I'll say yes. I'll hit enter and it will start downloading. So I'm using a proxy here. It's the app cacher ng proxy. And you can find a video on setting that up on my Raspberry Pi playlist. Okay, so I sped the video up there. I think that took around 20 minutes to complete. So now I can type sudo space reboot and it will reboot into the graphical environment. Okay, so it's rebooted. I'll click on Ubuntu here and I'll log in. Okay, so we have this little setup wizard here. It says, do you want to use live patch? I'll just hit next here. I'll say, don't send system info. I'll hit next. I'm not going to turn on location services. I'll hit next again. And it says you can install apps from the app store. So I'll say done. Okay, so now we have the desktop. We can open up a browser. This is quite a bit slower than running it on like a higher end uh, Intel or even a lower end Intel system, but it does work. I'm also gonna open a terminal. I'll get that going. So I'll open up a website here. So as you can see, it's a little slow to load. So if you didn't watch my last video, there were some graphical things I changed. So those were in boot, firmware, and then user cfg.txt. So I added these two lines, this disable overscan equals one and dt overlay equals vc4 fkms-v3d. So the first line got rid of the black bars around the window and the second line uh, helped with some glitchy issues that I had with the graphic system. So now if I want to get back into the console, I can type sudo space system ctl space isolate space multi-user.target. And I'll hit enter. And now it takes us back to the console. So I've logged in there. So if I wanted to make the console default again, I would type sudo space system ctl space set dash default space multi dash user dot target now reboot okay so it logged me into the console So if I want to switch it back to graphical again, I'll do the same command, but instead of multi-user here, I'll do graphical. And of course I could reboot to have it go back into the graphical interface, but I'll go back up here to my previous command where it said isolate, and I'll change this to graphical. And now we have the GUI login here.
Okay, so that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.